This is one of multiple OSPF videos. I was asked to explain OSPF multiple areas, and this is one of multiple videos helping explain how OSPF works when you have multiple areas configured. So we've now configured router one and router two. Router one is once again only running EIGRP P as shown here. Router 2 is running multiple routing protocols. So we are running both EIGRP and OSPF. So let me just do that as show run. It's running both EIGRP as well as OSPF. This command redistributes OSPF into EIGRP or translates, if you like. OSPF into EIGRP in the same way that you would translate French into English. And it sets what's called the seed metric or beginning metric to try and set an initial value for the route when it's redistributed. That's because we have to translate or convert OSPF, which only supports bandwidth, into EIGRP, which supports bandwidth and delay as part of its calculation. Okay, so let's configure router three. Now router three in this topology is a area border router. It has an interface in area one and an interface in area zero. So hostname router three, interface gigabit is zero zero, no shut, IP address 10.1.2.2. Slash 24 mask, interface gigabit 01, no shut, IP address 10131. Slash 24, interface loopback 0, IP address quadruple 3. Now here's another question for you. Can you run OSPF without a backbone area? So I'm going to enable OSPF. I'm only going to enable OSPF on gigabit 00 in area one. Will that work? Notice, neighbor relationship has gone to full. So show IP OSPF neighbor. Router three has a neighbor relationship with router two, and we are receiving OSPF routes, what are called E2 routes or external routes, from router one, and we can ping the loopback of router one. On router one, debug IP ICMP, ping that loopback. Notice we see the echo replies sent from router one back to router three. So the traffic is definitely getting to router one. So this is the thing to remember. You can, and this is not an exam answer, this is a real world answer. You can, not that you typically want to do it, but technically you can run OSPF in an area that's not area zero if, and this is the big if, if you only have one area. So at the moment it works fine because we only have area one configured. But as soon as we want to configure multiple areas, we need to configure the backbone area or area zero. So what we'll do now is enable OSPF on the loopback in area zero and on gigabit zero one. We'll put both of those interfaces into area zero. So now show IP OSPF interface brief. The loopback and gigabit zero one are in area zero. Gigabit zero zero is an area one. So that's the configuration of router three. What you'll notice as well is router one running EIGRP is learning about the loopback of router three because router three is advertising the loopback to router two using OSPF and that's redistributed into EIGRP and advertised to router one. Okay, so we've configured router three. Now let's configure router four, which is a backbone router. 
So I'll bypass the initial configuration dialog. We don't want to configure the router that way. Host router 4, interface gigabit 00, zero no shut, IP address 10132. So that's the IP address once again. Interface gigabit 01, IP address 10.141. No shut that. Create a loopback. This is gonna have a slash 32 mask. So do show IP interface brief. There are the IP addresses configured. This route is fairly simple to configure. All we're gonna do is configure OSPF on all interfaces using this command. So I'm simply gonna enable OSPF everywhere. So show IP OSPF interface brief. Notice OSPF is running on all interfaces of the router. Notice a neighbor relationship was formed to router three. So show IP OSPF neighbor. We have a neighbor relationship to router three. Show IP route. We are learning multiple types of OSPF routes. We have got what are called intra-area routes. Those are routes that exist in the local area, in this case, area zero. We have what are called inter-area routes. Those are routes that exist in a different area. And then we have external routes. Those are routes that originated from a different routing protocol. So show IP OSPF database will show us more details. We have two routers at the moment configured in area zero. Router three and router four have interfaces in area zero. We have one designated router. That's router three for this link. We have type three routes. These are summary link state advertisements or summary LSAs. So type one LSA is a router LSA. Type two LSAs are advertised by designated routers and advertised segments, such as this segment, 10130. They are type two LSAs. These are type three LSAs or summary LSAs. They advertise routes from different areas into OSPF. We also have a type four LSA. This is an LSA identifying the autonomous system border router, which is router two. We don't see this in area one. So show IP OSPF database because that router exists in area one. But for other areas to get to the ASBR, a summary ASBR advertisement is pumped in by the ABR. So essentially, router three is telling router four how to get to the autonomous system border router. And then we have what are called type five LSAs. These are LSAs that come from outside of OSPF. So those routes come from EIGRP, and we can see them in the routing table as this and this. The local router should be able to ping the loopback of router one, which it can. We can see the debugs shown on router one. So that's router four configured. Let's configure router five. Hope you found this video useful. If it's been of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.